Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and Cartooned today! Been a while since I've cast a cartooned replay. So it's gonna be Caster versus Joe here on Fighting Spirit. Top right, we have a yellow Zerg player from Peru. It is Castro. And in the bottom right, we have a white Protoss. It is Joe. I don't know who this is. Searching Joe StarCraft brings up a list of StarCraft 2 players, but nobody from the Brood War scene. So I don't know entirely who this is, but if you do, let me know in the comments and I will put something in the description. So, all right. So Castro passed away a couple of years ago. We are very sad when we lose a member of the StarCraft community. So I figured I'd honor him by casting a few of his replays, just, you know, just over the years, and if you want to see Castro uh, on my channel, just go ahead and search Castro at my channel page, which is youtube.com slash falconpaladin. Very easy to get there. Anywho, drone scouting. <laughs> this is, again, cartoon made by Carbot of Carbot Animations. If you like the style, go ahead and search up Carbot Starcraft. Click on the channel, hit that subscribe button, and go through the playlists of StarCraft stuff that he has done. Woof! You're going to get hit by some feels, and a laugh, and have a good time. I can tell you that much. Anyway, what do we got here? Gateway coming up. Doo -doo -doo -doo. No cannon rushing, and a 12th hatchery here on Fighting Spirit today. ka -chow. There it is. That's the thing. That's where we're at. All right, so yeah, this is you know, pretty standard stuff thus far. Oh, hang on, a second gateway though. Two gate zealot pressure gonna be attempted here from Joe. He wants to take Castro down fast. His APM is creeping up into the 350s or so, so he can play quickly, he can spam quickly, and a two gate opening versus a hatch firsting Zerg is very dangerous, although he hasn't scouted the Zerg player yet. And he's going the wrong way, and he doesn't know where to send the Zealots, and the Zealots are coming out soon, and the pool's not even halfway done. This is très dangereux. And what do we got here? Where are my Zealots? Oh, what the what? No, but go! Go murder something! You don't make Zealots in the first two minutes of the game and be like, I'm a defensive Zealot. I'm preparing against a very fast pool. I, all right. I guess you're expecting for Castro to fast pool ya. And you're well defended against that, but that's not what's happening here today, good sir. Unfortunately, God, I guess just absolutely wrong. Man, if you're going to... Do you even have to two-gate to defend against an early pool? I don't feel like you do. Just wall off. Wall off the top of your ramp with a gateway, and like maybe put a zealot in the gap here and have a pylon, and if a bunch of lings show up, then maybe throw down another... Like, uh, There's things we can do here beyond opening two-gate and then keeping... Oh my gosh, let's even another hatch. So he's making six lanes, which is fine, but he is really macro opening right now, and Joe is doing nothing of the sort. This Overlord's like, yo, two gate, and just now, oh my gosh, he's not even getting a cyber core. Joe, you're playing weird. <laughs> Gotta say you're playing weird right now, my friend. Run, run, probe. Get out of here. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of lanes. Dude, the jukes are hot right now, though. Look at him not dying. If I was controlling this probe, it would have been dead like a minute and a half ago. Okay. <laughs> We're just making zealots. Still no cyber core. Dude, Joe. We got to Oh, I guess we're just walking zealots up. All right. Well, Sunken's going to be really useful here from Castro, and he's got one. And another Sunken would be cool too, but this one's not going to really be able to participate because the zealots are already here. So, oh, hang on, hang on. They want to they wait for their friends. Just buy time for the second Sunken to finish. It'd be really nice. Caster does have a ton of lings, though. He's down 11 to 20 total workers right now. Hmm. So he needs to start droning, like, right now. I love this Overlord positioning, too. And this one's just fantastic. It's like, all right, so you're going to make a cyber core at some point. I don't have to move this Overlord because all of your pylons are right here. This is why you don't do this. It's easy to scout what you're up to. Ay, caramba. All right, so finally expand an expanding buff for Cybernetics Core. This is extraordinarily non-standard stuff from Joe. I don't know who you are. Look at this great wall of zealots. Bob the zealot. Most of them not looking at the camera, which is fine. They don't have to. They don't have to look at the camera. 
But yeah, you just you're not gonna bust through this with this many lings. There's like as many zealots as zerglings right now. But he is droning up. He's up to 17 now, which is great. He's getting an overlord because he's there. We go. What's the ply block for just half a second there? Now back to drones. Getting a lair upgrade on two bases. Lings checking to see is there anything crazy up here I need to worry about, like a proxy stargate or something? No. There's not. And Cybercore. I keep waiting. Oh, it's a Cybercore. All right, cool. Cybernetics Core on the way from Joe. Any sign of a third base at all? Mm. No. Nope. Lings just, they're so happy, little Zerglings. I like you guys. Hop, 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 hop. Hop, hop, hop. They hop as they run. I like it. I like it a lot. They're throwing up a defensive cannon against incoming Ling attacks. Maybe against incoming Hydra attacks, which are not on the way. Because, well, we're making a Hydra extend now, but it's going to be some time before Hydra can actually pop out. But if you don't have any splash, if you don't have any speed lots, boy, Hydra busts on two base can be really strong. If you don't have the ingredients to defend them, this is a lot of zealots. So, I mean, sure, they don't have speed. They can't really close the distance between the Hydras as easily, but, I mean, it still takes about 17 hits from a Hydra list to kill a zealot. At least it feels that way. Finally getting a start. Oh, we're lurker rushing. Huh, so two base lurker play out of Castro. And look at this, Joe's just like, I'm just still making two bases, got a ton of probes, and actually 31 to 28 workers. Nicely done, Castro. Catch up and worker count. Probably has too many workers for what he's trying to do right now. But it's hard for me to be like, Zerg should only be on 15 workers at this stage of the game. But you know, sometimes fewer workers is better for Zerg. I know it feels counterintuitive, but let's watch. Let's watch if he can spend his money effectively here. Yeah, this poor probe was like, I'd love to just naked third right here, but not allowed. Not allowed. Lurker aspect takes a while to research, but it's getting there. Overlord, sleepy, hasn't had its coffee yet. Tired of the world in which we live. Corsair production, plus one attack on the way. More cannons, which again, we're blind right now. If you're Joe, you have no idea what the Zerg player is doing. You don't know if it's Mutos, you don't know if it's Scourge, you don't know if it's Hydras, you don't know if it's Lurkers, or if it's just a hundred thousand Zerglings, which is possible. Not good, but possible. I mean, a hundred thousand Zerglings. How many links would it take to bust through this, do you think? Three cannons and like 13 Zealots or so. No attack upgrades and no armor upgrades. Corsair. Saved by some Hydralisks. And a Spire coming in. Oh, is this Manzerg? Is this what In Control used to call Manzerg? He kind of came up with the strategy of going for Lurkers and Mutas off of two base. And trying to just bully your opponent down. It's kind of more of a thing against Terran, but I guess you can try it against... Yeah, try it right here, right now against Protoss. You don't have Storm. You don't have Observers. Oh, man. He's, I mean, he's got our Templar Archives. He needs a Robotics. There you go. Robotics down here in the main. And the Lurkers are here at eight minutes. Rough. Incredibly rough stuff right now. Overlord movement speed getting researched. Zeal oh, a Zealot counterattack play. Burrow! Oh my, the Zealots aren't attacking them. Burrow. Burrow. Oh, they burrow. Oh, the Zealots. In no, 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 no. Okay, we don't want to fight Lings and Lurkers. Thank you. That Zealot pays the ultimate price. This guy, if you run fast enough, you can dodge the Lurker spines. And then Lings. Oh, 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 hold on. Lings backing out. Zealots for the counterattack. There are Sunkins. And Hydra's here, and like, there's Lurkers very close to being here. It's not the best Sim City as F I've ever seen or anything. But the Lings are coming up back home to try to help. The Lurkers are taking a little bit longer to build, but I think, I mean, that's just not. It's just not working. Zella gets into the mineral line inside the main base and will kill some stuff. Yeah, there you go. Got one kill, first kill, defenseless drone. I get murderized too. Gets right gacked. Okay. So still, we're two base to two base. I guess with the third base, never mind running for Castro over here. Oh, wow, interesting place for it. Like the traditional location that this probe is scouting for is not taken. 
and Gastro's kind of ninja-ing a third right now. I love this. I kind of love it, anyway. Storm's getting researched. Okay, Joe, he's doing better things now. I mean, he hasn't died or anything, but he has really no answer to these lurkers at the moment. Unless he's got an obs, which he should have an obs somewhere anyway. Got some DTs out, which is fun. Okay, but we brought an overlord down, so DT's not going to really work, win that battle. Yeah, maybe investing into like four DTs wasn't exactly what you wanted to do, you know? Oh, Lurker, from low ground to high ground, attacking this pylon. Muy excelente. And then Overlord's just, you know, watching for drops, which is good, because there is a shuttle that just got completed. We're going to try to DT drop, are we? There is no detection inside the main, so I kind of love this, actually. The larger problem is this is going to get scouted by Castro. He's largely going to see this. <laughs> and then the shuttle's like, crap. He'll be ready for it now. I ran right in, like, through an Overlord because there is no unit collision for air units. Spore on the way. Oh, we're getting Ventral Sacks for Castro. I do love a Zerg player that knows how to drop. I gotta say. Because, look, the other races can drop. Zerg players can drop, too. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DC's completely stopping all mining. Uh oh. That's plus one carapace that's going to get cancelled. Fare thee well, plus one carapace. By that I mean. Yeah, I got it. Okay, great. So they're dead now. Oh, oh, oh. Where's their, sh where's their shuttle? Mm, the shuttle is good gone. So these guys are just dead. Hide in the very tip top corner behind the resources tab. And maybe they won't find us. They did. Alright. So fourth base getting taken at the 12 o'clock here from Castro. Joe is just in trouble. Joe didn't have a good option. Like a good opening. Right? Couldn't get a third base out. Wasn't prepared for the lurkers when he needed to be. Didn't have Storm ready, but he's got Storm ready now. He's getting Singularity Charge, which he needs. I don't know about going into Mutalisks here, but Murrow is. If it's Manzer, it's Mutalisks, and it's, it's uh, Lurkers, so sure. It's a lot of gas. There's a lot of gas requirement here. So there we go. Observer out. Dragoons with range up. The day of the Lurker is over. If the Lings want to come in. The Cannons will clean him up, no problem. Maybe some High Templar Storm would be excellent, too. High Templars are nice and shimmery in the Carbot skin. Love in that. What are Lurkers? Oh, we got some Lurkers behind the Mineral Line. Ah, I can harass your workers, too, says Castro. Beautiful play there. And then just pick up and get out. I mean, a couple probes died there. Not that many. It's only 37. Maybe there were more probe deaths there than I thought, actually. Whoa, 54 to 37. Castro's way up in worker count, and that is just never a good thing. If the Zerg player's up 127 and 102 supply at 13 minutes, you're pretty much just dead. I'm pretty sure you're just a dead nerd. So, Mutas are out. I don't know. Can Mutas throw this game for Castro? Um, how many games have I seen ZVPs where Mutas... Oh, taking so much splash damage. The stacking is not how this works against Corsairs, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wanted to stack up to get some nice worker kills, but then there was a Corsair, and stacking was counterproductive. That's a lot of resources invested, and the storm is out. Dude. Joe might make more of a game than I thought this was going to be. Oh, this is this is great. Casually moving out. Sure, taking a couple of lurker spines to your dragoons, but so what? Lurker dead, lurker dead, pull back. Cannon's attempting. Muta's engaging. Never mind. Wait, did the Muta want to engage? Ooh, they sniped the OBS, but guess what? There's cannons here, so your detection is still in a defensive position, even if your OBS can't move out anymore. Yeah, these Mutas, traditionally, they're not bad against Dragoons. They're not the best against Dragoons, but they're not, like, just instantly die. Okay, Castro, or Castro could casually throw away, like, five Lurkers for almost no reason. 
Okay, these ones are out of range of detection. Where are your other observers? There you go. There's another one on there. There's gotta be one that... There it is. Okay. I was gonna say, there's gotta be one that came out, but... Alright, I love this. Joe's like, well, if the Zerg player's not here, then I'm just gonna expand here instead. <laughs> Castro's not scouting it. This is great. This is an absolutely hilarious game. Really weird non-standard stuff. Dude, the snipe on the obs by these mutas is hot. Castro's doing some really, really nice play right now. But he just hasn't been able to really threaten Castro's economy after that DT attack for a long time now. And Zerg player's up 136 to 120 at 15 minutes. It's a really bad time. Once again, did he just lose another obs? No. That obs is hanging out. Yeah, he's trying to, like, stack kill these Dragoons. It's not it's not going to work for you, laddie. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Look who decided to send a million Hydras up to this little naked... It's not a naked expand, because there are three cannons here. These Hydralisks have plus one carapace. They would have plus two, except that Evolution Chamber died, if you remember. Where does he... Why doesn't he have plus one? I guess the Lings have plus one. Did we give Zerglings plus one attack in this game? Probably. Oh, here they are. Yep, we did. All right, so the Hydras are... Oh, my gosh. This is a surprising number of cannons, actually. And some High Templar popped out, but they don't have enough energy to storm anything. But 1-1 one, one Lings with Hydra support. Going to do enough work here take it down. Excellent. And Joe's like, I must save it. Break out. Kill all. There are so many lurkers to kill, though. Ah, Joe loses his third base at 16 minutes, which is a, just a harbinger of absolute doom. You lose your third base at that time of the game. Observer snipe. Oh, did you overextend your observer again? Dude, Joe, we have to talk about this. We need to talk about you overextending your observers and getting them picked off by Hydras and Mutas and stuff. I mean, it, oh, he's got another one here. Okay, so he's just, I mean, honestly, just keep making observers at this stage of the game is what I would say. Castro's like, thank goodness you don't always oh, expand it here too. Dude, Castro, hmm. Castro's just going to overrun Joe here. Although, is he working on Defiler stuff? Yes, he's got a Defiler mount on the way. So there was a potential way here for Castro to lose this game, and that was to never get Defilers. In which case, kind of like a mass Dragoon Zealot High Templar army just kind of wins. Because if you can't plague anything or Dark Swarm to protect your Lurkers, the Lurkers totally suck. And then the Lings can't do much against the Zealots with attack upgrades, especially supported by Storm and with the Archons too. I didn't even mention the Archons. But if Dark Swarm's on the way, if Plague is on the way, then Castro is going to be just fine. He'll have all the tools that he needs. He'll have the bigger army value. He'll have the bigger bank here eventually that he'll be able to use to get the win here. So yeah, it's feeling very much like a Castro win. And there's not a lot that Joe has done here today to really make me feel like he's the guy. He's the guy who can win this game from this position, right? If this was like, and Bisu's now taking a third base at 18 minutes against a five base in Castro, I'd be like, ah, Bisu's fine. Bisu can totally win this game. Look at all these High Templar Bisu has. He's, each of these High Templars is going to kill 37 Hydralisks, and Bisu will be great. But Joe is not Bisu. In fact, I don't know who he is. And again, his gameplay has not demonstrated that he's that guy. So... <laughs> all right, High Templar, into your hands. We commend our luck right now. We can get incredible storms out. We can win this game. I love this. That is so much Zerg, though. Bruh. Bruh. No, yeah, then just move in here. Anyway, big time attack, jumping right on top of all of Joe's stuff. Dark Swarm protecting the Lurkers. The Druids have to get out of there now. I don't think they could win that battle anyway, even if they didn't have Dark Swarm to worry about there, or Invincibility Cloud, as Tastosis and Day9 called it during the 2018 Holiday Bash. Any or 17 Holiday Bash, sorry, it was right before 2018. It was in December of 2017. But, uh, yeah, so third base dies. This is just genius stuff. This is 
maybe the basic stuff, but also it's really smart when you can do it. If your enemy moves out, you counterattack at a weaker position because their whole army is trying to move out. So it's 160 to 93 supply. This is just the worst possible position that a Portos can be in. And yeah, other than the one Zealot attack that got up into the natural base today, there has not been a single solid offensive attack from Zhou, Zhou at all. He's, every time he's tried to move out, he's been shoved back in his box. He was allowed to have a third, only to have it instantly cruelly taken away by Zerglings. Plague is coming in. Ooh, just made five Ultralisks. Interesting choice against this Archon, Dragoon, Zealot kind of a thing. But you know, as far as soaking up damage goes, Ultras are pretty good at that sort of thing. Yeah, remember? Lurkers without Dark Swarm protection? It's hard for them to really get a lot going. Oh, eating a whole storm with your zealots or you're trying to kill lurkers. Like, I understand you want your zealots in there, but maybe pull them back while the storm is actively in the area where the lurker is because melee is tough. Just a bit. Look, Castro has the entire map. There was a PVT that I cast as part of the Sunday stream uh, about 10 days ago now where a Protoss literally took every base on fighting spirit except for the center one. And except for the natural base of his Terran opponent in about 10 minutes. It was expand, wait a minute, expand, wait a minute, expand, 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 expand. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And that's what Castro's doing here. In a pretty, at a higher level game for sure. Because the one from my live stream was like, ah, whatever, like D rank, F rank level stuff, right? But this... This is Castro's style on this dude. And I was like, this Joe player went 20 minutes with Castro. He's probably pretty good. And he is. He's pretty good. Okay, on the scale of where are you and good at StarCraft, this is pretty good. But Castro's better. He just is. This is look at all these trundly ultralisks. Trundle, 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 trundle. So happy, big smiling faces. Or maybe those revealing their teeth and they're gonna eat you. Possible. Quite possible. Yeah, I think, I mean, Joe might just see all of these ultras and be like, <laughs> Hey, a surprise flank attack of like 15 ultralisks. Oh, Joe's like, mm. wait, supply block. We got a supply block on Castro, 195 supply. This is a Zerg player forcing this engagement of 100,000% and forcing, forcing it, wanting it, asking for it, getting it. Dark Swarm is up. That's your GG. Everybody gets eaten. And Castro is your winner in 22 minutes and 46 seconds. Ling's like, was there a third base? He did have a third base, but there's only two probes here. So, like, are you serious? <laughs> You're seriously still here. Castro still wants to win this game so badly. Well, he won this game. He wants to style on this person, whoever it is. I Man, it's been a long time since I've seen a professional level StarCraft player stay in a game a full, like, minute and a half after it's over just to kill all of his stuff. Well, some of his stuff, and then he taps out. So, GG. And, yeah, I mean, this is... If you're a Protoss, this is something of a, a primer of how not to play PBZ. Don't open two gate unless you're going to be aggressive with your Zealots. Okay, don't delay your cybernetics core so long that lurkers show up before you have storm. Like, you can't possibly let that happen. And before you have observers, too. Like, the delay on the cybernetics core was just disastrous. And then he kind of went Corsairs, but didn't really commit to those at all, and then couldn't get a third base forever. And only had that one big attack that he was able to mount on the natural base of Castro, and Castro held that pretty easily. So, like... Yeah, it, it's dominoes, man. Your first mistake, your opening can totally determine how the rest of the game goes. It can. It doesn't always, but it totally can. And Joe kind of messed it up, and that that's it. I don't, like, from there on, I threw Protoss players were like, well, that's not going to go well. Yeah. So 186,000 points there from Castro, only 133 from Joe. 522 Zerg units produced to 160 for the Protoss. Kill death ratio of about a 2 to 1, but that outproduce is massive. 31 to 1 buildings raised. Some of that was after the game. I think that doesn't really count. And then uh, overall, 55,000 uh, resources spent to 33. Ooh. 
This is one of the bigger shellackings of a 23-minute game I've ever seen on this channel. So, Joe, I'm sorry, man. If you're watching this game, then, like, I apologize. This probably wasn't your best outing. And if you're, you know, if Castro is watching this from whatever you believe the afterlife to be, then, uh, hey. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Good stuff. All right, fantastic. That's going to be it from me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and a Carbot Stream. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.